Welcome back. This lecture always tugs at my heart a bit because we're going to be talking about attention and a great deal of that work was done by a friend of mine who died a couple of years ago, Professor Ann Treisman from Princeton University. And um, ah, there's a couple pictures of her, but you'll see. Attention is amazing. So we're going to start in this lecture talking about some definitions. We'll talk about selective attention processes and dichotic listening experiments. But the sort of questions that come up in cognitive psychologists when they study attention are things that students deal with all the time. For example, can you pay attention to more than one thing at a time? A lot of my students try to do that, right? I know they're on their laps tops doing social media or shopping or whatever and trying to pay attention to my lecture at the same time. Can they do it? Um, how about people who talk on their cell phones while they're driving? Think that's a problem? Or is it true that we ignore most of the stuff in the world? Hmm. Um, I want to start with a classic definition of attention it's old, it's over 100 years old, but in many ways it's the best definition that we have. And it comes from the father or parent of American psychology, a fellow by the name of William James. And he uh, offered the first psychology course in the US, that was at Harvard. And William James said, and I quote, everyone knows what attention is. It is the taking possession of the mind in clear and vivid form of one out of what seems several simultaneously possible objects or trains of thought. Focalization, concentration of consciousness are its essence. It implies the withdrawal from some things in order to deal effectively with others. Attention is really tricky to define because people use it in lots of different ways, but Everybody can agree that attention is the ability to focus on one or more things or locations in space, and that um, attention is selective, right? We can attend to one thing while ignoring everything else. So when you're in a very difficult exam, for example, you're paying loads of attention to the exam and ignoring everything else. Attention can also be divided. So um, the fellow, the, the student maybe at the bottom of the screen is a dad who is feeding his child while he's simultaneously trying to work on his laptop, right? He's trying to divide his attention. It's not selective, right? He's not ignoring the child or ignoring work. He's trying to divide his attention across the two tasks. On the right side of the screen though is a image that uh, sometimes is used to demonstrate selective attention. Now, when you look at that image, you can see one of two things. Either you can see a young woman who's looking away, and uh, in this case, um, the nose is here, and her chin is there, and this is her ear. Or, if you shift your attention, you can interpret this drawing as an older woman in 100% profile. So when you're looking at the old woman, um, this becomes her nose. This was the necklace of the young woman. It's the mouth of the old woman. This was part of the neck of the young woman. It's the chin of the old woman. So depending on where you attend, you can flip back and forth. So that's selective attention. You can select what part of an image you attend to. There are also some common ideas across all of attention research. One of them is that we are constantly bombarded with more information than we can possibly attend to. Another is that uh, we can respond to some information and do some simple tasks without much attention. Um, it's gonna turn out at the end of the lecture, you'll find out that those simple tasks or those things that we can do without too much attention, they're either super simple or someone has tremendous experience or has mastered that particular task. Uh, psychologists agree that if there's uh, an attention demanding task 
and you work at it and work at it and work at it and work at it, that eventually you can do that task with less attention. But um, this we're talking about thousands of hours of practice. Um, and everybody agrees that there's a limit to how much attention or attentional resources you can deploy at any one point in time. So what do I mean by selective attention? Well, I, mean, I think this uh, picture here sort of uh, captures the idea. So here's a man in the middle of a street focusing or selecting to direct his attention to the newspaper and ignoring the cars that could frankly hit him at any point in time. So filtering or selecting attention is that when you try to focus on one thing and ignore everything else, that's selective attention. You select where you're going to direct your attention and everything else is a distraction. We in fact call them distractors. Um, the mental processes that you undergo to ignore things, we call that filtering or selecting. So it's, it's a double-edged sword, right? You've got to pay attention to one thing and then actively ignore everything else. Come back and we're going to talk about whether students can actually use their laptop and pay attention to a lecture at the same time. Come right back.